Bismillah, alhamdulillah. Wa salat wa salam Rasulullah. <clears throat> Welcome to day five of our, our 10 days of Dhul Hijjah program. And today's topic is reconnecting with Allah. In times of stress, sadness, overwhelm, it can be hard. Bismillah, to... alhamdulillah. Oh, I do it again. Wa salat wa salam <laughs> Rasulullah. <clears throat> Welcome to day five. I keep forgetting that with the streaming, I have to make sure I uh, turn that off. Otherwise, it repeats itself over me. Anyway, as I was saying, that in, in times of stress, sadness, overwhelm, it can be hard to feel that connection with Allah. With the disconnection comes self-judgment for not being a better Muslim, and it can get to the point where it feels like you are lost and so today's topic is all about reconnecting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so I begin by reminding each and every one of you that you were born connected with Allah. We were all born on the fitrah, no matter what environment we were born into. We were all born innately knowing Allah and that connection with Allah. Now, over our lifetime, we have been, we've grown up in different environments. For instance, my environment wasn't a Muslim environment. I, I grew up in a very scientific type household that was pretty, um, I wouldn't say it, it, it was just non-religious. It was almost anti-religious, certainly not following any, any particular uh, religion. My my nana was a, a church-going uh, Christian woman, and when I stayed with her, I went to church with her, but that was the maximum amount of influence religion had on my life. Until I was 17 and I was an exchange student in Thailand, and during my time in Thailand, I got to connect with Buddhism. And... I lived with a Buddhist family and I went to many different temples. I saw the different types of um, Buddhist, Buddhism in practice there. Um, there was um, the type of Buddhism that my host mother followed versus the type of Buddhism my host father followed. Um, some temples had monks, other temples didn't. So there were slight differences there. And... And that was probably my closest experience with being a part of a religion. And I really had a beautiful time there. I really enjoyed that spiritual element of life. But I came back to my life in Australia after that and went back to a particularly secular, materialistic um, type of life and until i met a muslim was introduced to islam and started reading the quran alhamdulillah and i had this experience where i was you know guided by allah to embrace islam at the time the person who i had had met had already um gone back uh, home and left me with a copy of the quran and so I was on my own reading the Quran and, and one night I had a dream and I woke up in the morning and I just had this feeling I had to become a Muslim that day. And by the end of that day, I had said my Shahada. Not, I don't regret that one bit that has been my journey um, for the last 29 years. And so that, moment when I said my Shahada, that felt like coming home. It felt like I'd returned home. <clears throat> it was very interesting experience. And as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, do you think you can say you believe and then not be tested? I then went through test after test after test, alhamdulillah. And <clears throat> there were times when I felt very disconnected from Allah, very challenged in my faith. Although I never, I, I, my my connection to Allah 
were, were stronger than the other aspects of my life. Uh, for instance, I was um, nine years in, in a very, very difficult, abusive marriage and my body was physically shutting down. I'd shut down completely emotionally, but what was keeping me going was that thread where I was hanging on to, you know, the rope of Allah, making passionate dua to Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala removed me from that situation. And I've been able to, you know, grow ever since. And so I've experienced the feeling of disconnection and how that feels and felt that feeling of coming back. And one of the core times where I had a second experience where it felt like coming back home was when I came to understand our human experience and how <clears throat> certain things get in the way of our connection with Allah. And so now, alhamdulillah, I feel you know, quite connected to Allah, quite um, guided by Allah, always seeking and looking for that guidance from Allah in all matters, in all moments. Alhamdulillah. <clears throat> Not 100% of the time, no one is perfect. And as we know, Iman fluctuates. But what I want to share with you today is the, un the part about the human experience that helped me understand how to to remain connected or understand when I feel disconnected, what's going on from our emotions, from our emotional perspective. For instance, we all know how easy it is to say or do something that's displeasing to Allah when we're angry. It's the most likely time that we will easily cross the line transgress Allah's limits is when we're angry. It's also very easy uh, to lose track of things and and forget when we're, you know, stressed and overwhelmed and anxious. You know, we're so preoccupied with what's going on in our head pretty much that we could even miss a prayer time or, um, you know, Miss miss something that we're meant to be doing for the sake of Allah. <clears throat> and so it's really important for us to understand how our emotions are playing a role in our connection and disconnection from Allah. And so I thought I would use a bit of a demo because I like demos. I really think they paint a, a strong picture. So I've got a little light here brought out the camping equipment for today's uh, demo and it's going to make me have this sort of very <laughs> ghostly looking face for a moment. But anyway, this light here is to represent, you know, Allah's guidance, right? So Allah's guidance doesn't go anywhere. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't go anywhere. We disconnect from Allah. We turn away from Allah and on a day-to-day, moment-to-moment basis, it's often the way we are feeling that is covering us, seeing how Allah is guiding us in the moment. And so, for instance, if we have a lot of angry thinking, we've already talked about anger, then the angry thinking can get in the way of us seeing Allah's guidance you know, it's a bit almost like, you know, it's covering our heart, you know, if I, if I put the light here and <laughs> cover it here anyway, I'll, I'll, I'll keep it here where you can see. So we're angry and it's 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 like we can't see that guidance from a light. We're out, we're disconnected from Allah. We're so caught up in the anger. We also have talked about stress and overwhelm. And we can get so caught up in the stress and overwhelm that, you know, we lose our connection with Allah. And it's like, it's really like we're walking around blindly, honestly, you know, and we're trying to figure everything else out up here because we're not listening here. We're not looking here for the answers. We're trying to figure it out up here. 
where on earth did we ever get the idea that we would know better than Allah, right? In that moment, that's essentially what we're doing. When we're trying to figure it out up here, instead of listening to Allah's guidance, it's, it's, it is almost like we're saying we know better. SubhanAllah, Allah, stuff for Allah. It's, it's scary to even think of it that way. So the other thing that <clears throat> we've talked about so far is anxiety. And again, anxiety, in a way, is almost like somehow this has got covered and now we've you know, lost sight of the fact that whatever it is, Allah's going to guide us through it, that Allah is there for us as long as we turn to him, subhanAllah. And this is one of the things that Allah loves from us is to turn back to him. And that brings me to that, you know, second part of what I was uh, saying that the session was about is that when, when we have that disconnection from Allah and we start seeing ourselves saying and doing things that we know aren't pleasing to Allah, but it feels like we don't have any control over it and that it's it's out of our hands because the the it just happens so quickly especially you know in anger it happens so quickly and and it it feels like something must change in order for us to feel better so that we can do better but it's not true it's how we are seeing it that is the way we are thinking about it that is creating our feelings that is leading to the behavior <clears throat> and so when we see ourselves, you know, doing things that we know aren't right uh, and we feel like it's happening out of our control, we start getting very self-judgmental and we start criticizing ourselves, how bad we are, start feeling even quite defeated that there's nothing I can do about it, that this that I'm obviously a bad person because this is being on repeat over and over and over again, right? But the thing is, <clears throat> that thinking, that thinking that uh, you're having now, that thinking now, that anxious, frustrated, angry feeling at yourself, self-judgment feeling, it's doing the same thing. So by having that feeling about yourself, you're creating the same problem in the that you're you're struggling from in the first place. It doesn't help. Being self-judgmental does not help. You come back towards Allah. It just adds another layer, subhanAllah. So you might have the layer here that something's going on in the in your way you're thinking about things that's leading you to be disconnected from Allah. And here I've got another, I've got all the, as I said, I've got all the camping equipment for this demo. I've got another piece of camping equipment now. This is this is the fold-up bowl. This is now the fold-up plate. <laughs> so it's like here's here's the original feeling that's got in the way. Now what we're doing, we're adding another layer on top, which is the judgment about ourselves because we were in, whoops, because we were in this state, subhanAllah. So instead of going to the next level and adding more thinking on, what we want to do is come back to a thinking that is going to free us from that emotions, those feelings that are leading to that behavior. <laughs> and that simply comes back to what I've been talking about in the previous sessions about c coming back to high level thinking husnul dhan billah husnul dhan around ourselves husnul dhan around others all of that leads us back to good thinking what i call high level thinking thinking where we've included allah in the way we're thinking about it and that's true taqwa that's true consciousness of allah is when we're thinking about uh, you know allah in the context of the situation that we're in. And I've shared verses of the Quran and I've shared many things over the last last days to, to help with that part of it. So I don't want to focus on that part, but now you can start to see why emotional and spiritual well-being come together. 
because we need to have a good connection with Allah in order to be spiritually well. But in order to have a good connection with Allah, we also need to be emotionally well. So here's the thing. We're not here to eliminate feelings because that's impossible. Allah created, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us to be feeling human beings. And feelings are important. If we're not feeling, well, isn't that a, a psychopath or something? Is that, isn't that that somebody who's, you know, if we don't have feelings, we don't have feelings of compassion either. We don't have feelings of kindness, feelings of love, all these good feelings. And I would even argue that making feelings good and bad is also part of the problem. If we can just see our feelings as love letters from Allah, it helps us a lot. But I'm, before I do that, I just want to go back because there was one thing about love I want to share, right? Okay. We might say, okay, love is a good feeling. But if you have overwhelming loving feelings for somebody that is not halal for you, then that also can cover <laughs> love love and fear, I think, are probably the two most powerful emotions in terms of, of taking us away from Allah. And so be aware that it's not just what we label bad feelings that create this problem, by the way. Um, so just wanted to do that little side note before we move on to <clears throat> coming to a loving feeling. So the true loving feeling is, is the loving for the sake of Allah. It's, a, it's that unconditional love that there's no judgment attached to it. It doesn't mean that everything about the person is loving, by the way. There's a real... Um, the separation between a, loving a person's behavior and loving a person. And I think we get a little confused with this sometimes. Um, if somebody's behaving badly, we don't throw them away. We love them unconditionally for the sake of Allah, but we don't love their behavior. We hate their behavior for the sake of Allah if their behavior is something that is displeasing to Allah. And it's from this state of loving them but hating their behavior that we have a powerful way of enjoying the good and forbidding the evil and potentially helping them back to pleasing Allah. So it's really important to separate those two, I believe, because I think that when we've got people, especially people very close to us in our lives that are behaving really badly, it, it can be really hard <clears throat> and that can lead us to having very strong emotions that cover our our guidance from Allah. And so we can behave towards them in a way that maybe makes matters worth, worse rather than better. And so if we're able to love them for the sake of Allah, because they are a creation of Allah, just one that is at this point very off track, and needs help getting back on track, then from that position we have a light and we feel that connection with Allah and we can be part of the solution, inshallah. So today's topic was reconnecting with Allah. The, the key points are that it is reconnecting because once upon a time, we were all connected to Allah when we were first born, even myself who was born into a non-Muslim family, right? And so when I embraced Islam, there was a feeling of coming home because it was I was returning back to that connection with Allah after, after you know, decades of my environment covering that with 
erroneous thinking, erroneous beliefs, er um, good values, by the way. Like I was brought up with good values. It wasn't like I had to completely change myself to be a Muslim. I was brought up with good moral values. I was brought up with, um, you know, good character, just without anything to do with Allah. And so, as I said, that was a feeling of coming home when I embraced is Islam because I was returning back to that connection with Allah. <clears throat> and then the next time I had that feeling was when I had insight into this understanding that I'm sharing with you. And that was like another level of coming home because it was a shedding of, of many layers of what I had accumulated in my life um, that were covering my ability to really follow Allah's guidance. And now, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, I, I, I am never 100% always in following Allah's guidance or connected to Allah. No one ever is. You know, we always have this fluctuation. But now I have a really strong awareness of when I am and when I am not. And I don't freak out about it. I know that that what's happening is I'm having some thoughts and feelings in the way. And when they pass, I will feel that I will feel back into that state of Iman. And 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 that lack of panicking about it means that <clears throat> it takes less and less time for that to happen most of the time now. So it's more like it's a, just a a momentary lapse in connection rather than a complete disconnection. And that awareness leads to knowing, okay, if I'm not feeling guided or connected to Allah right now, right now's not the right time to make important decisions. Now's not the right time to have important conversations or take important actions because I'm not in my wisdom, because in my wisdom isn't anything to do with me. It's not mine. In my wisdom means I'm in connection with Allah, guided by Allah and following Allah's guidance. I don't own wisdom. Wisdom is from Allah. And when I'm emotional or I, I feel that there's something going on that is covering my ability to be guided by Allah in that moment, then there's a simple rule. Put my zip my lips, put my hands in my pockets. That way everyone is safe from me until I'm back in my wisdom, inshallah. And I'm safe from my own self too. Alhamdulillah. And alhamdulillah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us um repentance as a way of rectifying anything that we mistakenly do in those moments when we are disconnected from his guidance. So I truly hope that this has been an enlightening session and I have someone here in the room with me and I'd love to hear from her if she has any questions or a takeaway to share on today's session. Assalamu alaikum sis, welcome, I'm glad you are here. Yeah, alaikum sis, salam sister. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> Alhamdulillah, you know, I think it was a, a very good session about, you know, connecting with Allah. Um, it's it's like, I think when you're connected to Allah, I think you have like different sort of messages, you know, um, you know, coming in a good way, you know. Um, I, you know, I had like sort of an incident over the weekend and, uh, you know, for many years I've been looking at, you know, coming to your sessions and, you know, learning. Um, but, yeah, I just sort of like I was sort of reflecting about, you know, a family argument we sort of had. And it, it went out of a, a sort of control because obviously there were all different characters. And I think mm -hmm. the shaitan always takes the opportunity, you know, to light you up even more. And, you know, before I actually came on, I was just thinking about that if I had thought of Allah and I went in as an extinguisher, like a fire brigade, you know. Um, so I just thought about it before I even joined you, you, that, you know, I'm fire, the person angry is fire, 
the house is on fire, everybody's burning, you know, yes. nobody's going to survive. Yes. So, you know, if you have Allah uh, and you think that you're a fire brigade and extinguisher, imagine how many people who are burning you, you can prevent, you know. So subhanAllah, you, like I said to you, help me reflect. And mm -hmm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, because I think there's only, oh, have we got a third person? Yeah. Yes, I can. Um, okay. That's fine. It's only ladies, it's Nadia. Yes. Um, you know, it's just that, you know, when you're connected to Allah, Allah will set, send signs that so I'll be quite upset and reading the Quran and there'll be a message exactly what I'm going through, subhanAllah, you mm -hmm. know, and I feel comforted, you know. Um, so it's like, I do motivational coach coaching with, you know, women, all women, not Muslims, to be honest. But mm -hmm. I don't implement it. But what you're making me do is making me reflect of what I am teaching others to bring it into my life. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Which I, I do it really well. Yeah, even coaches need coaches, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, Alhamdulillah, what you are actually saying is, we get so lost in this world and the shaitan is ready, especially to those who turn to Allah more. He is always ready to make you error very quickly. You know, uh, you know, it's like I, I have with me, I have this issue that things happen so suddenly, so upsetting that, you know, I forget Allah. And I guess, you know, when, when when I'm in the right frame of mind, because as women, it's really difficult. I don't know about men, whether they go through perimenopause, but we have our emotional journey. You know, you're physically drained, you're mentally drained, you have heavy periods, you know, and sometimes you can't think straight. But then I always reflect on my behavior that wherever I am in public, how I'm behaving at home, you know, if people saw me, they probably think, oh, my goodness, you know. <laughs> Yes. You know, I require think, telling I us how to talk to our husband, <laughs> require telling us how to talk to our children. You know, so I, when I'm in that situation, Alhamdulillah, I've got two teenage children. I just think that Allah's witnessing my conversation, you mm -hmm. know, and that really helps me that, you know, um, no matter what people can't see, Allah is as Allah's watching me 24 hours and Allah will punish me for it. Other mm -hmm. people might not be able to punish me. The community might, might not be able to punish me, but Allah will. Mm. Uh, and alhamdulillah i think i'm picking up more quicker my mistakes you know it doesn't take a week to forgive somebody i alhamdulillah I forgive people straight away i always say i want to be in jannah whatever is happening to me in this world may allah forgive me and them i want to be in jannah with them i want to be with jannah with everyone i don't know how much good i have done they might look bad but what they might be doing with allah they might be going to Jannah. So I always believe that I always keep, keep relations, a strong relationship and pray to be in Jannah together. Maybe in the world that it might be challenging, you know, um, but you don't like, I, Alhamdulillah, I don't hold grudges. I just don't have it in me anymore. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Well, I very, I love your metaphor about everyone's burning. So you come as the, you know, the fire extinguisher and that being the fire extinguisher is coming remembering Allah. That was a very beautiful metaphor that you shared there, sis. Jazakallah khair. I love it. I'm Alhamdulillah, I'm learning from you, sis. Metaphors think... are fantastic. You, I mean, metaphors are a fantastic way of teaching. Yeah, I mean, Alhamdulillah, like I, I did a bit of CBT because I had a lot of family loss you know, um, like four losses over a year. And then I was going through hormonal changes and it made me, made me quite, you know, unwell. But what I find that my therapist, what she taught me is exactly what Islam teaches us, you know. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. she doesn't have Iman. Whatever they have gathered, you know, all, all these theories and things like that, it's from Islamic perspective. Like she taught me about hooking and unhooking, you know, you, mm -hmm. We hook on to things too long, you know. And then to me, like to unhook yourself quickly is really important because we've got up to think about our akira. We should think in the moment. We don't even know if we're going to, you know. Yeah, I was like thinking about, you know, um, like our heart, you know. It, it's like we could be taking our last breath and we take the world so seriously. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, you do know that CBT was first... Um, shared by a Muslim, don't you? 
Not really, no. No, it's not a Western. It's not a Western invention. The first. I thought so. Yeah. Um. I don't know if I've got the book handy here. Um. I do. Um. Yes, in the book Sustenance of the Soul, Abu Zaid al um, um he was he 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 shared what really is um, CBT now back in the ninth century. You might want to get this book and read it. Inshallah, yeah, definitely, yeah, yeah. Anyway, I think that this is the uh, a good spot to wrap up because I like to keep the videos um, short enough for people not to go, oh, I don't have time to listen because I would like them to listen. So Jazakallah khair for being here and for sharing today, sis, and definitely for adding that beautiful metaphor to the equation. I really loved that metaphor. It's awesome. I'll see you again tomorrow. Inshallah, tomorrow we're going to talk about khushu um, because the two things that come up a lot when people are joining the group is disconnection from Allah and khushu in prayer. So we're going to talk about khushu tomorrow, inshallah, which is kind of a direct follow-on from what we've talked about today, alhamdulillah. So jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. See you tomorrow, inshallah. Um, sister, sister, yes. hello. Hi, sorry, it's I know I've joined very late, and um, what it was, I had a question just like I quickly joined in, and um, I just wanted to ask, um, I received an uh, I this is off the topic totally.